Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today, this is a preset tutorial I just implemented for 5.0 called Paint Wave Solver, which is essentially the node version of the dynamic painting simulation in Blender. You can experiment yourself with this free demo file provided in the description. You can see three setups in the file. On the left is an infection spreading from the proximity of this empty object. The middle leaves a trail created by this empty object. And the right shows a waveform on the trail caused by this empty object. Instead of using the designed animated movements of these empties, you can also just delete the keyframes and move them freely as you wish. Just to make sure that when you play it, your timeline is actively running because this is a simulation. Before I talk about the exact usage, I want to share some background stories, which is very impactful for the development of this preset. If you have been with me for the time I made the demonstration for this function, it was initially asked by a user in my Discord server. So I have made a try and I kind of succeeded, but I concluded that I don't see the use of it. I didn't think it's worth it. My suggestion is it just to use the dynamic painting that default Blender offers. It may be painful to use at some point with these many options and the pool integration with the newest geometry nodes, but at least their algorithm is more trustworthy while I don't really understand anything of what I did. Why do I st store these many attributes? I have no idea. I'm driving a car without knowing how to build it. Uh, by the way, this file is also freely provided as a part of a free bundle up to mid 2025. I shared it for free because I really thought this was a crap. What's the point of reinventing a wheel and risking yourself with a faulty algorithm? Recently, however, I found use cases for it. At first, I was experimenting with this embroidery animation. Most of the concepts are straightforward and have been discussed in older embroidery tutorials. One simple difference is that instead of using large stitches, which can look ugly across the entire logo, the pattern is split into multiple segments. The other difference, however, is more troublesome. You can see that the knitting is not formed in a single direction. As the border fills in, the inner stitches start to form and propagate towards the rest of the area. How's that done? Whenever I talk about motion graphics, I mention different kinds of both. For example, in my most recent knitting tutorial about knitting cloth, I used the proximity fold, which expands from a center point to the border. But I also mentioned the directional fold, which moves from one side to the other. You can even use a noise texture along with a plus minus mass to form a irregular pattern of animation. In this case, we just need a different type of fold. We need one that can remember its state and propagate itself to other areas. To achieve this, we need to use a simulation zone to store the state of fold over time. Based on this memory, the fold can propagate and fade out. I briefly talked about this idea of memory fault in the past when I made the smoking trio tutorial. At the time, it was essentially just a painting and fading away, as you can also see in animations where a paint trail gradually disappears. <coughs> this time, however, we don't just need to paint, we also need propagation. That part is relatively simple, as it only requires a blur attribute in order to diffuse the values outward. This is the basic principle behind this variation of memory fold. By grouping the entire function into a preset, we get the paint wave solver. The paint wave solver contains two major types of functionality. One is the memory fold we just discussed where you can control memory, decay, and the spreading behavior. 
The other is a more complex dynamic painting function with a stronger spread component designed for wave generation. This can be used for color transitions, or you can enable an option to use it for actual displacement, such as wave motion. Since I made the preset, I'm responsible for testing whether it can actually be used in real animations with a real workflow. That's why you see these animations I replicated to test the function. In the previous embroidery animation we mentioned, you add a proximity fault in the upper left corner. The solver propagates it along the border curve, and the inner strands are gradually affected over time and also propagates itself until all stitches are formed. In the stitching animation, you firstly have a proximity fall for forming at each point of contact on the surface. The solver then propagates it to form a front-like wave propagation pattern. In this David animation, you use a proximity fall as the starting point of infection. The issue was doing this in a traditional way, as by scaling the proximity fault to finish the animation, is that it can influence all these kind of convoluted strands in a strange and uh, unappealing way. So instead, I choose to use this uh, wave propagation method so the effect propagates naturally along its path. These are the motivations behind this preset and the test I ran on it. There are, however, limitations and issues. The biggest problem is that it contains a simulation zone and is likely used in the middle of a node tree. To ensure a smooth workflow, you need to bake the simulation and whenever you change the parameters, you have to bake it again. This can be tedious and slow due to Blender's current design limitations. And unfortunately, there isn't much I can do about it. Overall, for now, I think uh, this preset will stay as it is. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will probably see you next time. Bye-bye.